All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today, I am here with Tom Volinchek. Tom, welcome. So awesome to have you today. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, you, you and I got to have a conversation before, and I, I've really been looking forward to this interview, and, and people will understand why when we start getting into this. And uh, oh, You're so ask, gracious. That's, well, yes. <laughs> um, I want to start by just giving a quick shout out to the folks at the, the podcast guest platform. Those, those folks and the work they're doing is amazing uh, for a guy like me who hosts a podcast and just is looking for the perfect fit kind of guest to interview for this show. Uh, man, those guys have been amazing. And, and Tom, you and I, uh, we are talking today because of them. And, and once again, what a great testament to the power of relationships, which is, that's what this podcast is all about. And so absolutely, what I want to do is I want to start off by turning it over to you so that we can set a little bit of context and give our listeners a little bit of idea of, of who you are, Tom, and what you're all about. So why don't I, you know, you, you, we can start by you sharing, you know, what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work you do, and even give us some backstory and share how you got into doing the work that you do. Because uh, I will tell you, it's pretty doggone fascinating. I want to uh, share it with the listeners. Well, thank you. So again, yeah, my name's Tom Volinchak. I'm originally from Youngstown, Ohio. I reside in Memphis these days, but I am, um, I guess they tell me I am a water expert. I've been fixing water problems for uh, probably 30 years of my life, maybe a little bit more. I don't even want to think of things that long, but um I um, started in this business as actual as an actual user of water products in the dialysis uh, marketplace. Okay. Um, I, I fixed a, a water system for a um, for a local physician, and I'll detail that a little bit better. I'll kind of go from the general to the specific. If okay, that's all right. All right. Perfect. So I I um. Uh, gained a little bit of uh, expertise in in the water industry and 30 years later I, I look back and my track record uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time uh, designing industrial water purification systems uh, contamination removal wastewater systems my uh, my designs my technology have found homes at places like St. Jude Children's Hospital uh, Ford Motors Toyota Baxter Travanol I even once designed a high purity water system for a Catholic priest who had this antique pipe organ with stainless steel pipes and it was driven by steam and he needed high purity water steam beyond like medical grade water to run this wow. this this pipe organ and that, that was a what a crazy thing so <laughs> the first uh you know i i got into this i went through a pre-med curriculum uh got a degree in biology and chemistry a bs degree uh, I didn't want to go to medical school. I went through a pre-med curriculum and I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life other than I liked science. And um, as fortune had it, a uh, Dr. Uh, Chester A. Amedia, who was a chief nephrologist at a local hospital in a dialysis unit, somehow through contacts got a hold of me and he said, hey, I need a water expert. And I'm thinking, well, what the heck do I know about water? I mean, not, you know, I know a little bit from college, but he needed a science guy okay. and he hired me to fix a problematic water system. And it was, um, it, you know, in the dialysis uh, world, the patient's lives really depend on that water before it mixes with chemicals. So the first thing I did was I, I took the job and then I spent all night that weekend uh, shivering me timbers thinking, what the heck did I just get myself into? This is, this is really one heck of a responsibility. Am I up to this? So I, I went to work the first day and he gave me a bunch of manuals and he said, that's job one. The system's getting contaminated every two weeks. We have to sanitize it. Uh, it's, it's not good. So I uh, called on all the vendors, got even more confused. And um, 
I requested and was granted a chance to go to California and take an eight-day seminar under the uh, direction of um, Jonas Salk. Okay. And that was quite an eye-opening thing. I learned a little bit about bacteria and viruses and organic material. I came back and I fixed his water system. And uh, I gained recognition as a guy in the clinical areas, dialysis, hospital labs, whatnot, that knew something about water systems. Um, I don't know if that was true, but at least for this one water system, uh, it, it was. And... Uh, shortly after that, I started getting interest from other hospitals. And then finally, a vendor, uh, uh, a supplier of water treatment uh, services called me and said, hey, we have an industrial end, but we really don't have a medical clinical specialist. Would you be interested in going to work as a sales engineer? Mm -hmm. And they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So I branched into that area. And at first, I was that was my area of expertise, hospitals, labs, dialysis units. As time went on, um, just I got exposed to the industrial world. And uh, over the course of time, I designed water systems for the automotive industry, the power industry, nuclear power for pharmaceutical industry, food and beverage, microprocessors, you name it, and drinking water, you know, municipalities as well. But the connection going back, why this first connection was so important to me, uh, besides sending me off on a career, because if you would have asked me, or am I going to work 30 years in water? I was like, in water? What the heck is that? But <laughs> Uh, what happened to me, and I think it's part of the reason um, I've been successful and I've lasted as long as I have, is is that the charge that was given to me was so important. Although I learned the technical end of it, I was a consumer. I was a customer. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of, I had to really pull teeth to get the right answers to fix this system. So I, I had, uh, when, when I hit the ground walking to sell water purification systems to others, uh, because of what opportunity was given to me, I uh, accepted a extreme responsibility when I provided water for somebody else. It was important that the corporate goals, we have to sell three of 3,000 of these, so sell that instead of this, that all went by the wayside. And I was going to do what was best for my customers, didn't care about the size of the project. If their answer was a $5 filter and not a $50,000 piece of equipment, I sold them the $5 system. And, and what I found throughout uh, the ages is that uh, that came back to pay me tenfold. And those little sales brought me new contacts and it, it brought me confidence and it brought me that, hey, I don't know what Tom's doing now, but he's the guy you need to talk to. It enabled me to build a career that I, I never uh, I never wanted for a job. There was always some place for me to go uh, through all the economic up and down. So I, I give a lot of credit to uh, Chester Media. Yeah. A doctor of media. Yeah. The the second important person in my life was the first the guy that hired me for the first my first water job, and it was a gentleman named Bill Watson, okay. who now is uh gave up water and he's a pastor of an international uh church, but uh he was a water guru and he was an interesting guy because he had a GED and he was working with a GED in a field of intellectual and technical giants. And um, I worked for a small company called Peck Water Systems. And uh, it was a group of uh, an Amish family. Um, and and uh, they were seeking to grow this industrial company and they hired me and I thought, well, how am I going to go up against these big names and go into places like Carnegie Mellon University and Ohio State? I got two Amish guys that are technicians. How you know they're installs? Well, 
as it turned out, I found out that what I learned on my own stood very tall with with against my corporation and these Amish guys. Uh, when they did an installation, it was all perpendicular and parallel. I even got got one time a, a kind of a joking uh, scolding because the plant manager of one of my installations called. He said the guys left the area so clean it made the rest of the room look dirty. And I caught hell for why isn't the rest of the place this clean? But it, it was a, a twofold uh, blessing to me in that uh, Bill, uh, Bill Watson was... I don't know if any of us are self-made, but he was a hard worker. He, the things that he taught me about water uh, stood tall throughout throughout my career and, and enabled me to have a self-realization. You know, we all need confidence. I don't care who we are. We, we go out into the world and we think, boy, am I really good enough to do this? And we all challenge ourselves. Yep. And one of the big breaks I had in my life is that a, a company called Arrowhead Industrial Water interviewed me for a job. And at the time, business-wise, I worked for a company that was maybe a million to 1.2 million dollars a year this was saying you know in, in 85 to okay. arrowhead which was a 75 million dollar company and had your mit and ucla graduates and and you know they interviewed me and i thought again what the heck am i doing here you know, well, I got hired. And as I went, it, it, I, I found that the things that I learned had me at an expertise level. I couldn't understand how these guys could have these big positions and not know things. And I started getting the same, the same thing that happened in the hospital as I, I started to get uh, not noticed as an expert and as a go-to guy. And it wasn't because of me patting myself on the back because I, I could have never competed in that marketplace, but because Dr. Amedia gave me a chance and challenged me and I took that challenge personally. And the same thing with Bill, he sent me out into to the world against tigers uh, he he paid me a compliment and he he um, told me that I make people feel comfortable and if I never betray that I'll always have the trust and through what these two guys did for me I, I went to this big gigantic company with a, a lot of self-doubt yeah and and you know this was about six years into the six or seven years into the industry I knew something but I didn't really know how much I actually knew. And again, it wasn't because I'm a genius or brilliant. Uh, it, it was because the guys that paved the work for my learning uh, gave so much to me. And I still today can't put a price on that. I told you earlier, I made a, a sales call today. Um, I'm kind of semi-retired from the industrial end of things, but this was as a result of some friends. And uh, I, I went to look at a system for a decorative aluminum. They make aluminum doors and windows and they're having a spotting problem. And I went in to look at their system. And the first thing that dawned on me was the solution to their problem was something I learned from these Amishmen and from a guy with the GED some 30 years ago and they were looking at all this complex we have to spend 150,000 to get rid of this and you know the, the answer was well actually you need to spend about uh, $29 to fix this is wow. what you need wow. and, and and you know I, I went out of there and because I did that now they left me with another opportunity to sell a new system that I probably wouldn't have even known about sure. and and I got $29 of their money actually to buy from somebody else. So it's, it's kind of, it, it's interesting, you know, that if you, if you, if you do the right things and you have, you just can't, you can't uh, pave a street 
without somebody having that bulldozer to scrape the old stuff off and heat up new patch for you and have workers to, you know, you can say, yeah, we'll put it here, but you really have to have all that behind you. And, and I, I've been blessed that way. Yeah. Yeah. You shared so much in there, Tom. And I, and I, and I love the, the example that you just gave where they were thinking like, oh my gosh, it's going to cost this much. And you're like, no, you know, actually it's only going to be about 29 bucks, you know? Yeah. And in that, you know, I mean, and, and you've been doing this for years, for over 30 years, Tom, you know, there's, yeah. there's the two trusts that I always talk about, which is uh, trust in character and trust in competence. And when those two trusts exist and people know it, there's zero friction and yeah. when there's zero friction everything can just happen it just kind of happens in flow you know and I'm, yeah. i've been doing what i do for years I, I facilitate relationships that impact millions of people's lives and in turn the byproduct the natural byproduct of that is millions of dollars in revenue are created because when yeah. you provide value that revenue is the byproduct and that you just gave such amazing examples of that of, of just you know that the the trust in both character and in competence that that over all these years you've just you've just built that just by being you yeah. and just by showing up the way that you show up and and you're right it just leads to so much because you know what having those two trusts together it's rare it's rare <laughs> And uh, well, I, I think it's um, I think it's the way we're supposed to live. It is, you know, and, yeah. and um, I, I've uh, I've always taken my work to heart. I've been blessed because it's a lot of fun for me. You know, yeah. it's 68. I had to get up very early today to go an hour and a half to see these folks and you know, I had the energy of a 25 year old version of me. So it was, <laughs> you know, it, it was uh, good, but um, I'd also like to talk about my newest endeavor in the future and uh, drinking water and uh, the state of the state of our water yeah. and what, what I'm trying to accomplish. Absolutely. Uh, Go right ahead. Tom. So, so um, uh, a few years back, I, started recognizing that uh, our drinking water was uh, in jeopardy, that more and more I was reading about these things. And as a starting point, in, in 2022, 75 million Americans drank poison water. A thousand municipalities were not able to meet the EPA safe drinking water standards. And as, as I read the news, these these instances of water contamination uh, now are the norm and not the exception. So I started to take a look at how can I apply what I've learned to make a difference because this really struck me. And uh, a couple things happened. I, I, um, uh, I wrote a book over this uh, same shameless uh, self promotion, but uh, I wrote a book called "Open Tap Drink Poison." In fact, if you don't mind, I'm going to stick it up here, and um, it's uh, kind of a culmination of my life's work. And it's a uh, I don't know if you call it a Bible, an anthem, but it but it um, th the goal of my work now is to help people achieve safe drinking water. Okay, and there's some dirty little secrets in this uh, industry and in this part of our our world that struck me the same way that poison water in dialysis struck me, and you know if if I were to design a dialysis system or a system for uh, water for injection for an IV bag or to make a circuit board chip. All of those industries have a specification, water for injection, uh, the AMI standards for dialysis, uh, electronic grade E1 water for making microprocessors. And it's very important that you achieve these standards because in the healthcare industry, you could 
you could cause illness. Uh, I've seen a company that because of their water, they they had 300,000 automobiles with paint defects because the water didn't rinse, allowed proper ad, uh, uh, adherence of the chemicals and three, four, five months down the line, all the paint bubbled off. So in, in any endeavor in my life, in the industrial end and the medical food grade, there's always been a specification for what water meets the standard, what's safe water, what will guarantee the process. Oddly enough, even though we have the Clean Water Act that gives us a very clear specification, as I started looking at the at the way we uh, do things, uh, in addition to all these municipalities not meeting the clean water standards, it came to my attention that there's not one company today that makes a water filtration product that promises, that guarantees safe drinking water. Uh, not one product that guarantees to meet the Clean Drinking Water Act. What bothers me uh, about that is, 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 um, you know, how how can and if, and if you there's a, a certification called NSF on a on a water product, and when you read it, you think, wow, it's certified and I'm safe. But when you read it, all it says is this is guaranteed to make water taste better, or we get 99% removal of lead, for instance. Okay. Well, that's fine if there's only a tenth of a part per lead, but what happens when there's three parts of lead? You remove 99% of it and it's still toxic. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to these water treatment companies, they uh, tell you, well, nobody can guarantee safe drinking water. Well, sure you can. Uh, you can guarantee safe dialysis water, safe water for injection. And I can tell you, water that goes in an IV bag has a heck of a higher standard than what we drink. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so, so I looked at that. That was the sore spot number one with me okay. is that why are people not promising safe drinking water? Why did 75 million people drink poison water? Why are, you know, it, with all of that? So it, as I looked at that, it kind of set a fire burning in me. And again, you talk about relationships. I started off an endeavor to you know, I have a commercial interest. I've invented a new filtration system that does guarantee that. But I also reached out to uh, folks in the industry and I said, hey, uh, shouldn't we ought to work with government and have a new certification so that if somebody buys a water product, it's guaranteeing them safe water. So voila, the next thing that happens is all these folks along the way that because of Dr. Media and Bill Watson that I met in the water industry, I started getting some folks with resumes that that humble me, tell me, yeah, Tom, I agree with you. I'd like to be on your advisory board. Or Tom, yeah, I'd like to, you know, help you with lab work. And and the same thing happens now. Little old me, uh, by the seat of my pants, uh, People I've met over over my lifetime have listened to my story and said, look, I, I don't know what we want to do here, but I'd like to be a part of raising this to a higher standard. And, and again, you know, the idea, if I have a successful product, that, that's one thing. But if I can change the certification industry to where our government actually does protect us and say, look, if you're going to sell the, the public a water filter, it, it ought to be guaranteed to make safe water. And, and again, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big uh, task. I can tell you that I got a lot of pushback, but fortunately, uh, I put a team together of folks that I would have, when I started, I would have never thought that these guys were going to kind of stand behind me and put their credentials behind it as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here I have now 300 years of water experience or something behind me saying, Hey, yeah, let's, 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 let's tackle this. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's kind of, for me, um, it's 68 years old. I'm still not running out of things to do in water. And the first guy that hired me said, well, welcome to the world of water. You'll never leave.
<laughs> well, I guess somehow he knew something I didn't. It sounds like and, and, it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so it's um again, none of it, none of it could have been done without the trust uh, and confidence that you are talking about. Uh, wow. Building a team, uh, because when you when you do something that's right, even if you fail and you say, "Hey, look, this can't be. I, I can't do this. You have to go to the next guy." Even that, you're doing the right thing, and it's a success. And, and a lot of times, we think only in dollars, only in plaques on our wall, and, and awards, and and whatnot. But sometimes our failure helps somebody get to the right place. And you just have to look at your failure just as you look at your success and yeah. And, yeah. and be honest about it so that somebody learns from it. You bet. And they learn my technology is not the one. So then the guy with the right technology looks at you and say, well, heck, if you know your stuff is wrong and mine's right, you need to come work for me and help me out. Yeah. So, um, that's kind of that's kind of my spiel. I don't know what else I can uh, share with you, but I'm I'm an open book. Well, so I I just want to ask one question because you know I'm naturally curious about stuff like this because so you mentioned you know Chester and you mentioned Bill and 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 yeah. there's been other people too, but I just you know if we look at those two relationships. And you look back over this. I'm sure you can come up with tons of examples to the question I'm about to ask. But I just want you to come up with one example. That, because I, I know one's just going to pop up for you. And that's the one that I want you to share. And so if you look at these two relationships and you look back over the years, and what is an example, one example of where you were able to make a really huge impact. And you know, hands down, that would have never happened if not for the relationship with either one of these gentlemen, Chester or with the relationship with Bill. What's one example of that? Sure. I um, I was working for Siemens and uh, the water systems at St. Jude Children's Hospital had some problems with them. Okay. And nothing life-threatening operational problems, but nonetheless headaches. Okay. And um, for the, for a while, because this had a commercial impact to it, it's, you know, that's a very prestigious account. And Siemens had been trying to wrest that account away from a, a kind of a local regional company that had some relationship through golfing or whatever it was. And you, you know how the world is, you have the right contacts. So uh, I was asked, could you talk to these people? Do you think you can win this account for us? Mm -hmm. Well, winning the account was part of my job, but helping somebody that's always been the real thing for me. Yep. So yep. I went, I went into the, uh, I went into the place and they gave me an opportunity to make a presentation. So because of my relationship that that what happened with Dr. Amedia and 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 talking to Jonas Salk because of him, I was able to gain immediate credibility in talking about the bacterial and organic the the algae issues and the things that were a, an issue for them. Then because of what I learned, uh, there was a just a simple thing, but it had a phenomenal impact. And it, both of those enabled me to eventually win this contract and do a whole redesign. And that part of the problem, there were some areas where they were having bacterial problems and they couldn't figure it out. They put ultraviolet lights. They tried this. They tried that. They're still having bacteria and nobody could figure this out. Well, the problem was simple. Water, when it moves through a pipe, has to move at eight feet per second. Otherwise, it'll grow bacteria and algae. So they've got pure water with no chlorine in it. So first I took a glance. I didn't have to go to the lab or any of that. Again, not because I'm a genius. It's because the guys that gave me an opportunity were pretty smart guys. So when I looked at this, I said, you got a, you know, you got a 20 gallon a minute pump. You got a three inch line. 
the water's moving too slow. It's stagnant in there. You got to tighten that pipe up or get a bigger pump. So they went down to a smaller pipe and voila, that problem disappeared. The credibility that I got with, with, St. Jude was, you know, I, I still, uh, the gentleman who brought me in, a guy named Dave Dunlap and put his confidence in me is, is uh, passed away. But the credibility that got, that gave me not only in my career and knocking on the next door, because when you have somebody like that telling another hospital, Hey, Tom came here and fixed this. That's right. You know, that international claim, geez, oh man, I, now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm humbled again. And, and then also the credibility that brought me within my own company because, Hey, look, we've been trying this with our best for 10 years and nobody wanted to talk about it. We brought Tom in and voila. So I got credibility because of, of Dr. Amedia and I got technical credibility because of Bill Watson and, and both of those. And, and, and if you look at the far reaching effect, uh, look at it, you know, from a simple, you know, if I was a selfish guy, I made a sale and I made commissions off of this, but I solved the problem in a very, very prestigious place. And, and I helped a lot of folks out and, added to my reputation and it made me look back and say, Bill, Ch Chet, uh, call them Chet. Once I got to know him, it was always Dr. Media, but uh, I called him Chester one time and I went up, he goes, just call me Chet. And uh, <laughs> I, I consider them both really great friends and mentors. But, and again, there are a ton of those things that have happened to me yeah. because of both of those guys or because of one or the other. And, and it's enabled me to uh, come off as an expert or have success. But, and, and again, without that, I'm, I, I would be nothing. I'd be just another guy uh, trying to solve a water problem. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, man, you know, the the purpose of this podcast, you know, for 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 you, I mean, I love as you, the person that I'm interviewing, I love giving you the opportunity to honor these people that have had such a profound impact on your life and on your business. And these two gentlemen have definitely had that for sure. Yeah. The other side of the coin here. For our listeners who are also entrepreneurs, founders, CEOs, yeah, uh, I just I love using these podcasts to inspire them to place an intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in their own lives. And yeah. I'll tell you, Tom, thanks to you, uh, we definitely delivered on that today, and we delivered on that in spades. I mean, you. What a testament to the power of relationships. Because, yeah, you know, you, Tom, you're a great guy. And you, I mean, in my book, you, you are a genius, but you are also surrounded by some amazing people who just see in you and they're, saying, they're just like, man, I want to be a part of what you got going on. You're doing this, man. They, they catch the vision with you and they're like, I am in support of you, Tom. Let's do this because together we're going to make a huge impact in the world. And how yeah. awesome is that? Yeah. It, it is awesome. And it's, it's humbling. And it, you yeah. know, there's a lesson, you know, there, there's a lesson in that. And it is for all of us in that you never know how the person you're interacting with will come back and benefit you and help you at another stage of your life. Yeah. And so many of these things, um, I mean, again, some of the people that have come forward to get on an advisory board for my new company, I, I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm tickled. I'm, I'm, you knock me over with the feather and it's, you know, I had, a, I met you at a conference 15 years ago and we were bowling and we were laughing and we talked about water. And I asked you some things and you helped me out and you remembered me from that. And, and then I helped you with this and you don't think it's a big deal, but I don't know any person who 
gets a benefit from somebody. The guy that you got a tire, you're short on cash. Oh my goodness, it's this my sidewalls messed up. And here comes this guy and he says, Nah, you know, I I've been repairing these. I could do a little trick here, you know. Eight bucks. You don't need to buy a new tire. And then you meet that guy later on in life, you know, and he's, you have an opportunity to help him out. He needs something. And you remember what this guy did for you yeah. and, and you return that favor. And um, you, if you want to reach high, you have to reach out. Oh, I like that. You know, um, and, and, and if you do that, you'll, and if your goal, if what you're reaching for is pure, if, if you reach out over time, I, I believe you'll get you'll get to the goal you want. Yeah. 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 Well, Tom, for anybody listening to this going, man, Kevin, I really like Tom. I like who he is. I like the way he shows up. This guy is really something else. And, and maybe they may want to know more about your book too. How can they find out more information on what you're doing? So the easy, easiest thing to do is go to my website. Okay. Water is the new gold. Okay. Dot com. Okay. There's, you can subscribe. I'm not, you know, I don't like, uh, if I can help you out, you can subscribe to all the, you know, there's social media stuff out the, out, out pouring out your ears but if if you go to my website waters the new gold and subscribe i don't send out marketing letters or anything like that the only thing that you'll get from me is when i write a new technical article on my blog you'll get an email that says hey tom put a new article out and that's the only interaction i don't sell anything uh on the website i'm not hey you gotta buy this product i don't endorse somebody else's products although i do reviews of products and i uh you know if somebody makes a claim to do something i hold their feet to the fire and if they stand up to that fire i you know say hey, this is uh this impressed me but water is the new gold.com my book is open tap drink poison you can go to amazon.com and pick up a copy okay awesome awesome and i'll i'll send you once you give me your address i'll send you a copy of the book very good very good well tom i just really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation today to share from your heart uh and i just want you know I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, is there any last thing that you feel led to share before we call it a wrap? I think we covered a, a lot of it. I'm very thankful to you and for the podcast folks for giving us this kind of opportunity. Yeah, and um, absolutely. Uh, this is just a wonderful way to spend some time. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, Tom, Thanks so much again. I'm looking forward to getting this interview out there. Thanks again. All righty. Well, my pleasure.